Hello, this is Mr. Huff. Let's talk about gliders in flight. So basically the idea is as the glider moves through the air, it's going to be falling toward the earth. What we want to achieve is uh, we want to make that glide toward the earth be as long as possible. So we want to turn that into forward motion over a distance. One of the things about gliders, they don't have an engine, so they are going to fall unless they can take advantage of thermals. And here on this side of the screen, you can see uh, that when the ground heats up, the air will rise. And when it rises, the glider can ride that thermal and gain altitude. So that's how you can fly a glider where it's just not falling down all the time if you can catch a thermal updraft then you can achieve a higher altitude than where you started the key idea behind glider design if you can achieve a straight and level flight without oscillation that's where you're going to get your greatest distance remember the three axes of movement we have yaw and pitch and roll yaw is vertical the roll is longitudinal and the pitch is lateral. So let's think about yaw for a moment. Actually, that was this is what yaw would look like. This is turning left and right around the center of gravity in the middle of the plane. The roll is the tips of the wing going up and down around the center of gravity of the plane. And the pitch is the nose and tail going up and down around the center of gravity of the plane. All right, there's some uh, different kinds of stability. So static stability, it's, static means, you know, it's not moving. So it's kind of uh, like if the aircraft were uh, moving along at a constant velocity, uh, this would be stable flight. So here you can see in the first example, there are no moments acting on the plane and it flies nice and straight. This is a lovely world to be in statically unstable airplane what it's doing is it's lifting trying to rotate so as time goes by it's going to stall and that's not very desirable and this is a really weird uh, condition to be in it's neutral static stability it's where if the plane is uh, disturbed then it holds the condition where it stops it doesn't return to stable flight so it will try to retain that position then we bring in dynamic stability, and this is uh, how the stability is changing as it moves through the air. And we have statically and dynamically stable. So what this means is the plane may be disturbed and it oscillates, but that oscillation goes away. And then we have statically stable and neutral dynamic stability. So in this case, the flight path is oscillating just a little bit, but the actual craft itself is it's oscillating, uh, the pitch is oscillating up and down and up and down and up and down, even though it's pretty close to a straight flight. And the worst of both worlds is if it's uh, statically stable and dynamically unstable. This means that as once that oscillation starts, it just gets worse and worse until you crash. Let's talk about roll and stability. A high wing aircraft like this is naturally stabilizing so this is why a lot of the uh, planes that people learn to fly in have a high wing because high wing aircraft tend to return to stability uh, something else you'll see is the concept of dihedral so we have the wings instead of being flat they tilt up a bit at the tips and this uh, this displacement from horizontal is the dihedral angle so what this does is it increases stability when it's in stable flight you have an equal surface or an equal lift on both wings when the aircraft is tilted this wing is functionally longer and this wing is functionally shorter if you look at the trig problem here uh, if you look at the component here in the horizontal axis it's actually shorter now so this wing has more lift than this one so to see an animation of this here we go so we have uniform lift if the plane is tilted off center, then uh, we have the relative induced winds hitting the wings. We have a higher angle of attack on this side 
than we do on this side, and that results in a higher lift on the wing on the left than the one on the right, and the lower lift on the one on the right by comparison, and that's going to cause the aircraft to roll back into stable flight. So dihedrals try to return to stable flight. So there are some different types of dihedrals. If it's a flat wing like this, there's no dihedral. If you have a point in the middle that both wings rise from, it's straight. If you put the dihedral away from the body, so it's flat in the middle and tilted up on the ends, it's called tip dihedral. And if you have segments where you have dihedral in the center and further di dihedral on the tips, then it's called polyhedral or mini hedrals, right? So let's look at yaw for a moment. When you shoot an arrow, it has a heavy tip and fuzzy feathers on the back, and that design makes the arrow fly straight. And in the same way, most aircraft that have the engine in the front and the uh, stabilizer, the vertical and horizontal stabilizers in the back, then that acts like the tail feathers on an arrow. This is called the keel effect. Same idea for ships sailing in the ocean. Usually the rudder and that sort of thing are at the back and that helps the ship uh, stay pointed in the right direction. Then we have uh, something called weather vaning. When an aircraft is flying through a crosswind, the wind is going to generate a moment on the body and uh, vertical stabilizer, and that's going to cause the airplane to want to tilt into the wind. And you can see some video on YouTube where aircraft are flying in really heavy crosswinds. The plane is moving in a straight line, but the body is tilted uh, sometimes very aggressively, the higher the wind, the more the tilt is. So as you watch them, it looks like they're going sideways as they're flying straight. So the idea of this is when you have the crosswinds, you have moment arms acting. So you get a moment from the wind pressing against the vertical stabilizer in the back, and that causes a rotation around the center of gravity of the airplane. Uh, this is the... <coughs> A B-17 bomber, compare the C version to the E version. In the C version, the rudder and vertical stabilizer were not large enough for the body and power and size of the wings. Okay, So as they flew this, it was pretty hard to maneuver because this was too small. To resolve this, what they did is they extended the, and increased the size of the vertical stabilizer and the rudder so that that way they could achieve a more stable flight and more control in the with the yaw. So anyway, good example. A lot of pilots don't like to fly A versions of aircraft because they have a lot of bugs. All right, let's talk about pitch a little bit. This is uh, thinking about the angle of attack. And we've talked about this. As you increase angle of attack, you will get more lift to a point, And then you get to a point where the Kawanda effect fails and you get turbulence on the back of the wing and then you stall. Okay, So every aircraft, uh, it has a specific limit that you can go to with the angle of attack before you stall. So thinking about weight and balance, ideally you want the center of lift to be over the wings. And that means the center of gravity is right. You want the center of gravity and the center of lift to be lined up so that the plane is stable. It's like a seesaw. So if you have weight uh, pushed forward, it's going to cause your nose to tilt down. So your center of lift and your center of gravity are not aligned. And that's going to cause the aircraft to put just continually decrease pitch in the front and then if you shift the weight toward the tail you cause instability there as well so the main idea is you want to keep that center of gravity in the limits of where your wing attaches to the body so if you keep it there your stable flight will be easier to achieve and this is something to consider as you design your own gliders <laughs>